on to the next project, of course. Look what's in the garage. This is going to be project anti-sway because we got a sway problem. As you saw, makes sense because it's lifted like 10 inches or something. So we're going to see what we can do. And it's kind of funny because on my channel, I have a video of me installing a body lift on my truck. And guess what we're going to do? Well, we're going to remove it. When you're 16 years old and you want to lift this thing up just to make a mud truck to clear 40s, you do what you got to do for as cheap as you can do it. I'll give you a little advice for all the kids out there that are 16, 17 years old trying to lift their trucks to do what I did. Skip the body lift. Put If you want it lifted that high, just do all suspension. Body lifts are I don't know, not my not not my favorite. You you see all the framework the frame and it's just the plus they're hard to install. People say, oh it's just putting little pieces little hockey pucks in between your body. You get more than that. You you got fan shrouds, you got filler necks, you got all the stuff raising the bumpers. If you want it to look good, people don't realize how much more work it is than this might as well just do a suspension lift. So skip it. Take my advice, you'll thank me in 10 years. We haven't had an update on this truck in so long. We got the truck uplifted, you know, we have the, the wedges in there, which we need to wedge those farther in. We gotta, we gotta try and get that, do that some more. Um, but as you can see, I have this half-ass um, you know, I was trying to see here. This is a perfect example, guys. All you 16 year olds is a perfect example. This is me trying to hide that there's a body lift. So I put toolbox matting or whatever in between there because it looks terrible. So the bed is pretty simple, honestly, other than if all the bolts break loose. What is going to be difficult is the front. And the reason why the front is going to be so difficult is because this is a 70s front clip on an 80s frame and I had to the, the, the body mounts were offset. We used tubing and then the body mount here to offset it forward so it would land because the body mount normally would have been back here. Now here's a better shot of it. So the body mount normally thread was right here and then we had to offset it to go over here. And then because of the body lift, we were able to lift it and make it work. Whereas now, I gotta figure all this out. Oh look at that, we welded a piece there to get that extended up. See, I, I don't even remember the stuff we did. You know, it's been so long ago. Yeah, we're gonna try and get the body lift off of it. The whole source of this reason is, first of all, I don't want it on there anymore, and second of all, it's to help with the swaying when the camper's on it. And it will help, I don't know how much, but it will just because it's gonna bring everything down three inches. Lower your center of gravity, the better it is. So, I'll tell you what, it's fun working on this truck again. It's been a long time actually working on it. So it kind of feels good to work on it again. Got all of the, uh, all that crap that I put in there years ago with all these fender washers and self tappers. Got all, saving all the washers there. And uh, look at that clear view right through there, huh? Yeah, body lift, baby. Don't you want one? Finally gonna get this bumper off. These bolts haven't been out for a long time. Now that the bumper's off this thing, you can take off this old light bar I put on. Self tappers, of course, what else to use? And now, the main reason why I took the bumper off at this point is because there was a bolt coming through here that, inter that was too long, of course, put it in the wrong way, and it interfered with me taking this off. I'm like, well, I gotta take the bumper off anyway, so I'm gonna get these, our nice easy access now. There you go, you can see the, uh, body lift in there and let's keep on rolling so here's a trick I'll show you so I got these are the actual true carriage bolts that have been line X over so if anybody's taking bed bolts out in older trucks especially these square body Chevy's they'll know that you pretty much will always wallow out these carriage bolt um, holes and they won't be squares anymore so therefore once you start cracking the nut here it'll Sometimes it'll spin the whole bolt and it's spinning up here and you can't put a wrench on here because it's a carriage bolt. So a trick is, as I, I had a lot of stud here, luckily. So I 
thread it on two nuts, jam nutted them together tight, and then what you do is, see like right now, watch, I'll spin this and the whole bolt's spinning. Then I'll hold a wrench right here to fight against it, and that, that nut will come down. So in order to get the line X away from the carriage bolts, I'm using a brand new blade on the razor and cutting around, right around it, and there's like two layers when they spray this line X. Here's one that's completed. It takes a little bit to get through there, but that's how I'm getting it ready to go for the next bolts. So believe it or not, these are the carriage bolts uh, that I had in there for the body lift with the body lift installed, so they're a lot longer. Um, and you can see how much threads were sticking out. So we're gonna cut them down because they're too long in general and because we're removing the three inch body lift out of here. So the other thing that's interesting is that the bed in here only has two stripped carriage bolt squares. So that's cool. We're gonna reuse these carriage bolts. We're gonna cut this down three and three quarters of an inch back and then make a mark. But I'll show you the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up. So now that we have the bolt all cleaned up, we're gonna cut it down. But first, before you cut it, you're gonna thread on, if you have it, two nuts all the way. I got the both of the nuts all the way at the top. And we gotta go, we gotta shorten this three and three quarters of an inch, or three and three quarters inches back. So I make a mark right there, that's where we're gonna cut it. I have soft jaws in here so that it doesn't ruin the threads. As straight as you can. Now that we hit it with the grinder, it's it's pretty sharp still. So you just come in here with a little bit finer of a file and hit it at a 45. Even as possible. You don't need this, but it helps. This is a thread file. Got this from my grandpa. And uh, that just, it's the exact pitch of the threads. I mean, there's all different threads on here, but I know which one. And then you just kind of, you go in between the threads and this clears it out. Take this thing and thread it off of there. You can thread this off and on. <laughs> yeah, usually you'll kick off a burr there, but you know what? When you do a good job with the thread cleaning, it'll just spin right off. And then the second nut is just an additional thread I don't know, it just helps helps make the threads what they need to be. And then you should be able to take and just thread it right on there, just like a regular bolt, which you can. So that's how you cut it down and it's in good shape. Now that's not coated there because you got raw metal there. So it's helpful to at least to either paint it or put uh, anti seize or something on there for corrosion resistance. Just let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I got it. You got, you're clear? Yep. Clear? Yep. One, two, three. Oh. Okay. You alright? Yep. Yeah, I'll pop one out of the way. One, two, three. Go ahead. Are you clear? Yep. Yeah. Now that I got all the bolts cut, I uh, put anti seize on all of them and dropped them into place now that the body lifts down. And I got. The hardware there. A couple of the bolts I gotta get new because they're I gotta get normal bolts because the carriage bolt is stripped on the bed side. So I'm just gonna leave those in there so that they don't that they stay in line so I can tighten all of them and these will still drop in when I get two new bolts. So that's it, let's get it tightened down. Body lifts off. As you can see, we have the bed dropped, tightened, done. I got the correct size bolts. Had to replace two of them with regular hex head bolts. And then I just took a spray bed liner and sprayed over it. Eh, it's the bed of a truck. It doesn't look perfect, but I'd rather that than having a bunch of bare steel. All right, we're gonna rip this bumper off so I can assess what the heck's back there for the front body mounts. So of course you can't stay on one task. I'm trying to remove a body lift and I got these nice, lights fog lights thought they were awesome when i bought them well they were they were pretty bright and i had them mounted right here on the front and uh it's kind of interfering with my body mount situation so i was like you know what those things don't work anymore let's remove it well then i started getting into electrical 
And all I gotta say is the electrical that I did when I was 16 is not up to par. But that's okay, because the truck's still here. And uh, like, like, look at that, look at that uh, grommet area through through the firewall. You couldn't get another 20 gauge wire through that. Jeez, look at all this. So I'm just ripping stuff out that I know that I put in. All right, I just set the camera down talking about electrical and I found this and it's like, I had to pick the camera back up. So if you guys remember back in the 90s, they made these, uh, they made these um, little lights that you could spool out and you know, whatever, just work on your truck at night or whatever. And uh, so I took one, oh, I just broke that clip, that sucks. I took one and uh, installed it in here, right? And then I'm looking at the wiring, you know, I got the hot figured out, that's fine. And then I follow, follow the ground here, you know, everything's normal, goes up. And then, uh, oh yeah, you need ground, baby. You just strip it real far back and tie a little loop around there. Yeah, she made ground. So here's the situation. We have the rad support here, the body mount. This is a homemade block which we used for the body lift portion of it this is the existing body mount now where that lands is a little bit offset of where it needs to be the original body mount on the 84 frame is rearward compared to the 78 front clip so and then the other thing that's interesting it's a three inch body lift that's installed on it right now and it's an inch and three quarters of a lift in the front and that's what we needed to make these body lines straight. This is the spring hanger bracket as well. It's all intertwined with rivets. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to modify this bracket to make it work. I don't know yet. I got the bottom portion of this body mount out and I have this loose in here. This little portion, this little uh, sleeve is connected. I have to jack the whole front clip up high enough to get this cleared to take that out. I have it blocked up with some wood so it's loose. And on this side, I just got it loose, got the nut off from the bottom, and I'm getting ready to pull the bolt out like that, trying to bolt out of all the mud and junk and stuff up top here. The old bumper risers cut off and I ground them smooth so it's ready for the new so here's the original and then here's the one that I just ground smooth and we're ready for the back to original bumper location now I'm taking this bracket off so that I can gain access to cutting this up to making it work at the new lowered location this is the driver's side front and that soapstone is the top of the mount where it's going to be and here I cut that old body mount lift off and uh so there you go, you can see the top and get ready to cut that off. So here's the existing uh, GM front uh, cab or front core support body mount location slash front spring hanger mount. It's all a combination. The goal is to, we have to lower this to make the top of the mount at that mark right there. So this is too high and you can see I just, I just cut this out. So that's gonna go away. And then my plan is to bend it on this line out like this and then weld a flat plate. You'll see it at the end, but I just wanted to show. Here it is bent out like a banana. So I'm figuring out that when I was younger, when I put this body lift on, we just grabbed whatever. As a reminder, we used the 1984 K20 frame and we used a 70s body. So at the time we just knew the body mounts were different and we grabbed whatever when we were setting the cab and the front clip we were just grabbing whatever body mounts fit and worked okay so that's that's as far as we thought it and it worked so now researching it more to get new body mounts it appears that the 70s body mounts and now this is between square body chevys which is most of them are 73 through 87 the 70s earlier style rounded nose fender like mine have this style mount they're all i think they're all different um, between the rear cab front cab and front radiator core support but in the 80s once they went to 80s style they went to this style which all of the six body mounts are the same so that was the um 
body mounts that when I re bought replacements that I ordered which are here and they're ready to go but I got all 80s ones well it doesn't come with the hardware so and these cup washers and things like that so I, had, I went to the junkyard and I tried to remove as many body mounts as I could in the amount of time I had and I didn't get everything I needed so what I got was one complete body mount here and I got four bottom cup washers and a Sherman. What are you doing, Sherman? What are you doing? Essentially, I'm just mix matching everything and making it all work. But I need to convert to 100% 80s body mounts. So we got to go all 80s, which is this style. So I need these big cup washers. It has this like sl steel slug in the middle. And then that gets removed off of there. This is all you get with the new aftermarket body mounts. You just get the the consumable, the rubber or whatever, plastic. So this steel portion that has the slug that goes inside of here, that has to get removed and the bottom cup washer has to get installed on here before you put it on. So, and obviously the bolt and all that. I gotta go and get all this stuff. You can't buy these by the way. I think you can get them from LMC but they're like $28 per mount for this piece and this piece. So I'm not paying that. So we're gonna try and keep going to the junkyard and getting as many top mounts as I can. There's your body mount with the 70s style cab mount that I used underneath here with like the rubber gone. Another problem that you have with these, I guess, from watching people on YouTube now. See, back when I was building this truck, there was pretty much, you know, there wasn't a video on how to remove square body Chevy body mounts. Like, <laughs> stuff has changed in this many years. But anyway, I was watching those videos and I guess a lot of people are having trouble with these bolts go all the way up into the cab there and then they're tap or not tap but there's like a cage nut or like a square nut that's locked in this little groove and it's all within the the, the cab floor sheet metal and i guess they strip them out and then that you gotta like cut the floor of the inside of the cab and remove them and it's like holy crap i cracked all these loose and i loosened them and they actually came free i can't believe it we got to change the plans here this is the uh mount that I have half rebuilt and this is the bottom portion of the new 80 style mounts and I don't have enough room I'd have to really reconfigure how I have this flared out here for this to fit as you can see that's not far enough over so that's using the 80s mounts I'm just gonna revert back and for the front use these old 70s mounts which do fit in there that's what I'm gonna do is use this original 70s mount just for the rad core support here and uh, obviously get a new bolt. Look at that rust on there. I have the hole cut out and that is the shape that I have to cut out with the grinder. This notch. Let's see. I got the uh, other pieces, the flat pieces tacked in there. Uh, this is a side shot from the driver's side looking directly into it. This is a front shot from the front bumper looking rearward. And then that's after I ground some of the welds down. Ready to go. So here's what I got for the bracket modification. You're looking at the passenger side there. And there is the driver's side. So that is going to allow for those body mounts to get lower at the right height. I finally got the transfer case linkage out and this is what we did <laughs> way back when to make this drop work so the transfer case would work. Typically obviously this rod would be connected. So. I gotta reverse this. My goal is to measure from this pin to this pin in this direction and get that dimension and then re-weld it. So I cut this spacer plate out and I got a sleeve. I got all my spacers here. I found a sleeve here I used and then I got my dimension where I need it and 
I got it elevated there. It's kind of working. So hopefully I can tack this without moving it around too much. Good morning. Next day, we got some pep in our step. Getting it. So, we're getting stuff together here. We got the cab precariously jacked up with a two by because that's all you can fit in the inner rocker. So I got it jacked up just enough where the front body mounts or the uh, cab body mounts are lifted enough. There's your three inch lift lock. And then under that, uh, underneath that is the body mount. I, I jacked up the cab enough that I can remove the body lift. I removed the rear body lift mount. And look at this thing. Wow. Now this is an 80s style mount. So when I put this together, I must have used an 80s style mount because I'm assuming now because that cross member is off of the 80s cab and that was the only, the hole that you need to fit that. So here's one I got from the junkyard half of one but we're going to resurrect the top and then replace the the rubber piece with the new mounts here well we got to change the plan here is what's left of that body mount this is what it's supposed to look like <laughs> this one i got out of the junkyard the other day is in really good shape compared to this i mean i took a chipping hammer to this and it just you know this was what was in there and it just fell right apart. I mean, look at that. Crazy. But I'm going to use this one for now because I know it's good. And uh, paint it up, get it ready with the new mounts here. Put them in there and get it all ready to go. So here is the fan shroud. And I cut the bottom out to clear the fan with the uh, body lift. And then also I spaced it out about this much to make up the three inch gap with bolts, uh, longer bolts. So now I'm going to put it back where it was like that bolt it together but before that I want to clean it up simple green in the hose the fan shroud scrubbed down and cleaned up there was a crack here spidered out I drill stopped it here so the crack stops and then fixed it with a zip tie you could plastic weld this polypropylene but I just didn't feel like spending the time one right here one right here so it's way more stout now and now I'm gonna just use this armor all it says it's good for plastic and just I don't know, spray it, it'll look nicer, I guess. There is your new redone fan shroud. I used stainless hardware to put that back together, and uh, it looks pretty good for having a bunch of mud and crap in it. Here we have the only good body mount, new body mount that goes right in there. So, there we go, we got one. So, there you go, there's the underside of the cross member for the cab mount. I painted both sides, I have it jacked up right now. And then here's the new mount. I'm gonna slide this thing in there. Just like that. We have this jacked up right here with the jack. So the whole cab and front clip is jacked up. I removed both the body lift blocks out of this side. The front core support is removed. The bracket is now lowered. That's re-welded as you saw. I have a body mount sitting in the front core support and I have two body mounts sitting on the driver's side, all the driver's side. So I'm gonna lower this down. I do have two of the body lift spacers in the passenger side of the cab because I don't have that side jacked up. So I'm gonna see if I can pivot it down and lower it the three inches it's gotta go. See if the cab bolts are still hand that can be removed and it doesn't bind them. Okay, it's hitting the fuel tank. It's the board rubbing against the flange on the fuel tank, so let's keep going. All right, I got the uh, this other side jacked up, passenger side. I had to peen in the uh, the fuel tank tin to get that two by twelve or two by ten in there onto the inner rocker panel, and I just jacked that up and that relieved the pressure, and I got the rear passenger side mount out, which is 80s style, which is good. Remember. That's the old one. Here's the new one. So, or not the new one, but the next one. So let's see if I can resurrect this. If I can, that means it's one less mount. Got this thing painted up. Doesn't look too bad when you throw paint on it, even though there's holes through the center. But there's enough strength. 
I'm gonna use this dielectric grease. I guess it's okay for rubber and plastic, which is some sort of material is what that is. I'm just gonna give this a lube here just to hopefully prevent corrosion in the future. Oh, and you gotta save your coffee stirs because they're perfect for this job right here. All right, I jacked up the other side, put blocks underneath it, and removed the blocks out of the front. I'm just pretty much just jacking it up and lowering it down in steps. Kind of like you raise and lower the, camp, the truck camper. Yeah, I just wanted to show the disaster, I guess. We got it all done. Well, not all done, but cab bolted down temporarily, kind of. Watch out, Sharon, go ahead. So I got it done as, as far as I could, and the thing that got me going was, there's cage nuts that go on the inside of the cab floor. If you're doing this, you'll know that, and you can't get to those unless you cut the floor out or anything like that. So those threads on those cage nuts are the way they are. The half inch coarse thread is the threads of them. Well, the rear two on my truck, on my cab, the rear the rear cab mounts were half inch coarse thread, and the front two cab mounts were metric. M12 coarse thread, which is like M12 by 1.75. And I had to go to the store twice to do that because I bought all half inch bolts thinking they'd all be the same because one would think that, right? Yeah, so anyway. I don't know if someone put those in there. I don't know why GM would do that. But anyway, it's a tip. It's done. Got the truck bolted down. Everything's tied tied down tight. And uh, it's three inches lower today, so that's good. No bumpers on it yet, but we'll deal with that another day. Geez, I'm used to having to take two milk crates to get up in here. I only got to use one now. So here's the deal. The old radiator support uh, that we homemade was this bent rod my dad made and then he welded a end of a bolt threaded 3 8 bolt down there and when he did that it uh, we drilled that hole that you see to the left and that because there was a body lift there's three inches of a gap between the top of the frame rail which is what you see here and then that's the bottom of the radiator support belly thing and then uh, that interfered now because when we lowered it, it's three inches closer, so it hits the frame rail. So I was able to scoot the rubber mount of the radiator over a little bit, and then I just drilled a hole just to the right of it, which cleared it barely. And then it's really close to the to the fins on the radiator there, so I put zip ties as like a plastic barrier. So there's underneath, you see the threaded rod coming down, I just double nutted it. So there you go, that's it. And there's another shot of the body mount, homemade deal there lowering situation and it is gotta get the fan shroud in and it's done here we go we got the truck outside Pulled it out of the garage. It's kind of on a hill, so it does have appear to have more of a rake than it actually has, but there is definitely a rake to it. Those are 37 by 12 and a halfs, but they measure out to 35s because they're a little bit worn out. Obviously, got to get the bumpers on it. Got it all set up there, and it's uh, it's working. Another thing that came up for an issue with 70s inner fender wells without a body lift with 80s frame is it hits the shock. So I gotta take a jigsaw or something and carve the carve that out there. Here we have the back side of the front bumper. You can see it's kind of starting to rust. And I'm gonna try to use this flap disc to get this thing ready for paint.
Got it all taped off. And of course we picked the most humid evening of the year to paint. So I gotta get this done before it gets dark. I'm painting over there at the bumper. Now look at this nice sunset. The real deal. No saturation boost there. Nice summer sunset. At it again. Next day, we got the bumper. Tried putting the rear bumper on, and then I remembered that I had to lower it because of the body lift, dummy. So there were other bolts or other holes here. And I just raised this uh, frame bracket up, <clears throat> and hopefully, hopefully that'll work. And then these will bend into place here, and the holes line up, and it should work. Got the rear bumper on, done. Didn't get every single bolt in there that came from factory, but guess what? I didn't have all the bolts in there for the past 14 years, so yeah. Yeah, I had to do some changing up there. Added a bolt at the rear, which I don't even think I had on there before, and couldn't get that one lined up, but it's solid. Front part of the frame here, gotta get the front bumper on, obviously. We have the tow hooks, they gotta go in. We have the outside bumper supports here that I cut the I cut the risers that I had off of them for the body lift and just painted those ends. Then we have the little mini frame extensions, which is probably the nicest parts that I have um, for this build so far because I don't know, painted them up nice. Let's get everything together and show you at the end there. Alright, here's the bumper with the new black paint underneath the back side today is the day we finally got this body lift off this truck and it's sitting in the driveway with the bumpers on it and we're gonna get this camper and we're gonna put it on there today and test this thing and run a little test drive without the body lift and see if it made a difference first things first this has to get clean Clean. Got the camper on there. We're gonna see if this thing is any better without the body lift. I still think we're gonna need some other modifications to the suspension. That's my opinion. Let's drive it and find out. So on this test drive, it was similar to the last test drive where it made a slight difference. Not really as much as you'd think for the three inches getting removed from the top heaviness. But you know what? Stay tuned for the next video and we're going to tackle suspension. We got to go right to the source, start from the bottom up. Let's keep doing this. See you next time.